Hi everyone, so Riot Races seems to be in a good place and progressing well. With this in mind, today's video is a collection of thoughts and ideas that I have seen on the Discord channel and a few of my own. While writing the notes for this video, the broader financial crypto markets have had a correction, which is most likely in response to the Evergrande property fears in China. Thankfully, as I film this video, the market is quickly recovering. As for the NFT markets, they are generally flat with huge oversupply from a large number of copycat profile picture projects and shillers working hard to pump and flip every drop. With this context in mind, it has reinforced my mindset of sticking with a small number of high quality projects, particularly those with utility and, a very, and I very much believe that the best utility is and will be around dedicated teams building interesting games. Now, the number of those projects is relatively small. The list would include, in no particular order, Axie Infinity, Zedrun, Illuvium, Star Atlas, Aurori, and of course, Riot Races. What stands these gaming projects apart from 99% of other projects and limits their numbers is that they take serious talent and knowledge to develop so the time frame is much longer than your average profile picture collection. I've been playing games for most of my life, and like others in the NFT space, I can see gaming where NFTs really take off and pull in the masses. Even now, where the gameplay is basic or still in development, I'm more attached to my Riot Races car collection and Z Run horse, Hello Baby G, currently 25% win rate, than any other in-game item I have ever owned in traditional, in traditional non-NFT games. So for the next few minutes of this video, I'll be talking about why I'm still bullish on Riot Races, and then I'll finish the video with some of my musings on the game's future. The first and most important reason why I'm sticking around and purchasing cars and assets is because I'm even more impressed by the team and community and I was when I spoke about this a few weeks ago. This comes down to their detailed and constant communication and no BS attitude towards any issues raised by the community. The hours they must be working are extremely high. This was again evidence in the rarity information that George released on Discord this morning. And while this means that Riot Races will take a longer to develop, and as community members, it may sometimes feel like community awareness could be moving faster. I believe the result will be an actual finished product that is enjoyable and rewarding to players. This leads to my next point, which is that I like how that Riot Races team are focusing on actual elements of the game, like the car models, the Riot token, the app, and loyalty programs, rather than flashy marketing through websites and CGI videos. I also like the way that the team is implementing the Riot token early so that it is ready to go when the game launches. This is important because it will drive the economy for the game. For example, Riot will pay for the gas needed to enter a race, repair your car and mechanic workshops, pay for advertising on billboards, which I love by the way, so expect to see a certain YouTube channel advertised. The Riot token will also be used to pay race winnings and any other parts of the game's economy. All of this has me excited to see how the game evolves and particularly the market value of the Riot token. So, it's clear that I am a fan, but I do have some questions and musings that I hope you find interesting. These are not issues, but just aspects that the team and community may need to consider, and they're true for all projects of this nature. First up, I want to talk about the oversupply issues that projects like NBA Top Shots and Z Run have. This is a good problem to have that Riot Racers will invariably face because of the need to allow all players to purchase a cheap car. But I think it is important that there is, there is a very clear distinction between the Genesis cars and the regular cars. The team has obviously already thought of this with the announcement of their Riot Owners Club program. Stay tuned for more details on this in a future video which rewards monthly Riot tokens to owners of, owners of Genesis cars. And this may in itself be enough, but I do think that some other points of difference could be considered. For example, making the regular cars visually muted and making the loot box rewards meaningfully better for Genesis cars. 
This would still allow everyone to participate while maintaining the rep and value of Genesis cars. Now of course there is a balance to this and if the rewards are too high then the Genesis market may stagnate and players may lose interest. This will be overcome by addictive gameplay and ensuring a strong bond between all cars and their owners respective of when they bought them or irrespective of when they bought them. Okay, I want to quickly let you know that there have been some additions to the white paper, so now would be a good time to click on the white paper link in the comments below. The main changes have been to the Riot Game Token page, minor changes to the roadmap, the Riot Owners Club, car rarity resources, and possibly a few minor changes that I've missed. So the most interesting information in the Riot Game Token section is that the token will be used on the Layer 2 Polygon network. This is good news for low fee lovers. There will also be staking for the token and a maximum supply of 250 million tokens distributed as you can see on screen at the moment. The white paper emphasizes that they want to encourage players to hold the token and use the token in game so that there is as much balance as possible between the inflow and outflow. So, my next point is just an observation about the team's approach to community feedback after announcements. Let me explain. Recently, the team had clearly put a lot of thought into the Riot Owners Club announcement, but then as soon as members of the community raised concerns, they quickly communicated that they would make changes to the program. Now, don't get me wrong. I think listening to the community feedback is a big strength of the team, but there is a difference between listening to the community and being like a kite in a hurricane, Mr. Bond. The concern is that they announce something like the Riot Owners Club, people spend money based on the announcement, then others complain and very quickly the team goes, don't worry, we'll change it. Now a better approach could be to announce what they are thinking of doing, ask for suggestions and then implement based on feedback. Now of course, I understand that the, this raises issues as well, so I'm interested in hearing what you think. Comment below. Okay, I'll finish the video up with something that I'm interested in hearing about from viewers, and that has been the seemingly cold reception to Racetrack Land. The reason I say this is that the Racetrack Land took considerably longer to sell out during the drop and has had a low markup on OpenSea. This seems to be because people are concerned with the potential rewards from holding land. In saying this, I am personally hanging on to my land because I suspect that if the game becomes popular, then the rewards could be more appealing and I suspect the team will look at ways to reward landowners because it is such an important element of the game. But I am interested in hearing what others think. Anyway, that's enough from me. I'll see you in the Discord and happy racing. My next video will look at a complete beginner's guide to getting started with Riot Races. So everything from setting up your MetaMask wallet to setting up the marketplace, to buying cars, getting on the Discord. So I'll look forward to seeing you in that video. Bye for now.